Filtration is a great method for purifying wild water in the US and Canada. Filtration is going to remove the protozoa, which are Giardia and Cryptosporidium. They're very difficult to kill. They're the ones that are really going to make you sick. I've had Giardia before. It's not something I ever want to have again. And it also factors out bacteria like E. coli, which is really from shit. So that could be from a horse camp. It could be from a previous human uh, encampment that infected the water. But filtration is a method that I often default to when I'm in the US and Canada for a bunch of reasons. The ultraviolet purification method is one that's very popular, but I think that there are, uh, like everything, some pros and cons. And so there's also some pros and cons to filtration, but overall I tend to default to filtration for a couple reasons. One, these methods can be either active in the form of a pump or passive in the form of a gravity fed. So there's, there's no electronics and there's no chemicals. It literally is just relying on water, going through a filter, and removing those contaminants that I talked about. Secondly, I can carry these and I can connect them directly to different bladders and water sources. So I can pull from a creek or a stream or a seep and I can pump or filter directly into the bags. I don't have to worry about measuring out a liter of water and treating a liter at a time. I just go as much as I possibly can. Some of the, the cons are that it takes a little more time than say most of the purification methods. If I'm using a pump, it actually takes some effort. So if you're tired, you're dead dog tired, you need six, eight liters depending on the camp and the number of people. Somebody's gonna have to sit there and run the pump. Um, that can actually be, be a little tiring, especially when you're at altitude and pushing day seven or 10 of a trip. Um, Filters can also clog, and you have to potentially back flush, which is generally not an issue, but it does take a little time. It, 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 you need to do some maintenance on these products. Um, and the last one is that if you're in colder weather, so at or below freezing, that oftentimes if you don't pump all the water out of the filter, there's a possibility, uh, depending on the filter that you use, that that filter can crack. But overall, what I really like about filtration is, if I've got a dirty water source, it's gonna pull all the dirt and debris and silt, fire ash, anything like that out of my water. It's gonna pull the protozoa and the bacteria that I'm most concerned about in North America. And it, I'm gonna have some really nice, clear water that doesn't have any kind of chemical taste. Now, when you're looking at filters, there's really two different kinds of filters. There's a ceramic filter now, a ceramic filter um, is, is a really good filter. It's going to generate a, a lot of water. You're not gonna have to back flush it very often. You don't have to clean it as much. You don't, it's got a longer uh, service life. But the problem with ceramic filters is um, if, they, if they do freeze, they can crack and they're not gonna let you know that they've cracked. And if they've cracked, then there's a possibility of letting through those protozoa and bacteria. So a ceramic filter is a great filter. It's generally a little heavier device. It's generally a little more effort to push the water through, but you're gonna get a lot more water through before you have to back flush or treat. Now, some of the more popular filters are what's called a hollow fiber filter. So a hollow fiber filter is kind of what it says. It's more of this honeycomb type shape. When you look at the filter, you're gonna be able to generate a lot more water a lot quicker through a hollow fiber filter. But because those filters are a little more open, they are a little more prone to clogging if you have a dirty water source. So you may have to back flush a hollow fiber filter more often than you would a ceramic. But even though a hollow fiber filter will freeze in cold weather, a hollow fiber filter will not crack. So anymore, I really tend to default to hollow fiber filter devices um, for the reasons I just stated. They're just easier to use, they're a little lighter, they're a little less expensive. The other thing when you're looking at filtration, especially if you think that you're gonna be pulling from a dirty water source in the backcountry, and it's really important to have at least an idea of what that water source is gonna be, is that it's a really good idea to use what's called a pre-filter. So what a pre-filter is, is that's gonna be a larger filter that's not gonna filter out 
the protozoa or bacteria, but what it is gonna do is it's going to filter out those, that larger debris, that, that mud, that silt, that fire ash, so that your main filter doesn't clog as often or as quickly and that it can do its job of actually filtering out the bad contaminants that could potentially make us sick. I really like to run a pre-filter no matter what, because I really generally don't know what my water source could be. I mean, I think I'm gonna be up high. If I get pushed down low from a storm, I could be you know, trying to pull water maybe from an elk wallow, um, and that would be a really bad thing. The last type is this passive gravity-fed system where I have a bag here that's a dirty bag. It even says dirty, where I would just scoop three liters at a time of this water behind me. I would hang this up on a rock, a tree, et cetera. It would flow down through the filter and it would fill this three liter uh, bladder. And then from that three liter bladder, I can either use that or I can transfer it to whatever uh, containers that I have. Now, the nice thing about a gravity fed system is I don't have to pump. So I could literally go down to a, a water source or me and my buddy go down to a water source collect three liters of water, hang out in the shade, let the gravity do its job, pull three liters at a time, transfer it to whatever bladders or bottles we need, and then move on with their lives. I really have, uh, really have tried to use gravity-fed filtration systems if I can. A couple years ago, we were on an elk hunt. It was a very arid area, and the only place we could get water was from this small little seep. We were able to funnel the water uh, from that seep into this bladder, collect three liters at a time, hang it on a rock, hang out in the shade in the heat of the day, and that's how we would collect our water. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration when you're trying to figure out what method to remove the contaminants from your backcountry water. The number of days, the number of people, the environment you're going in, the time of year, the water source that you think you're going to encounter, and then you know what vessel or container are you gonna put that in. This all has to be part of the calculus when you're planning that backcountry trip because purifying backcountry water is critical to not only our performance, but our survival in the backcountry.